How can you come to a wet fit and don't expect for you to get wet? You don't know his blows you go get. You watching sad TV. Bring love the reading, sad telecoms. TV News. I am Alicia George, your presenter. In our top stories, Claire Haber announces 400 jobs. Six Caribbean countries eligible for U.S. visa program. Ex-president warns Ukraine on brink of civil war. And in sports, Dominica takes on Martinique in friendly football match. Details of these will follow. Nobody can love it the way I do. I'm way to my yodi yodi. We do everything is a welly welly. Your love they make my heart to do yodi yodi. Nobody can love it the way I do. I'm way to my yodi. What's up? My name is Vas. And this is Mesh. And we, we are, are brackets. brackets. And you're watching Sad TV. Don't miss it because if you miss it, you will lose it. Brackets say so. One love, everybody. How can you come to a wet fit and don't expect for you to get wet? You don't know his blows you go get. You watching Sad TV. Welcome back. Junior Achievement Dominica launched its Our Nation program at the National Development Foundation of Dominica, NDFD, today, Wednesday, January 29th, 2014. The Our Nation program that we're here to launch today, we have bits of the resources here on display. Um, we believe that the investment in the, well, that's what we do. We invest in the classrooms very heavily, and we believe that this is going to make a difference. It is because that these materials feature modern learning aids, and it's a focus on real life. Ms. Labad highlighted the participation and work of junior achievers here on the island. Many have excelled, but there are none who have excelled quite as well as some of you here. And I feel that the junior achievement agenda here in Dominica is not only being recognized, but some of you have taken, or taken this on in a very personal way. And that's something that not only needs to be recognized, but that's something that needs to be commended. And I'm going to promise you here today that junior achievement is going to make a very big shout about it. Five of the participating schools will be trained on the use of the materials to access professionals. What we want to be able to do is inspire the students to think outside the box of the story of maths, English, and science. We want them to understand STEM skills, that science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. For, for those students who don't love maths, what we want to do is ignite a passion and understanding, hey, this is something that you don't like, but we can all excel at things that we don't like or things that keep take us out of our comfort zone. Twelve business firms, eight volunteers and seven media organizations in Dominica were also recognized for their outstanding partnership. They understand the language and the lingo of entrepreneurship education and so their involvement says to corporate Dominica and says to other um, funders that this is a serious program and so we just want to recognize that they've made a contribution not only in kind but in cash. Certificates were presented to Dominica Manufacturers Association, Lime Dominica, Quartz Dominica, Ross University School of Medicine, Dominica Electricity Company Limited, Domlec, Dominica Water and Sewage Company, the Wasco, National Development Foundation of Dominica, NDFD, Jay's Bookstore, Sorrel Consulting, National Cooperative Credit Union of Dominica, Dominica Government, through the Ministry of Trade and the United States Agency for National Development. Junior Achievement Dominica is a non-profit organization committed to the development and implementation of programs that empower young people and their future success. In more news, 
In the aftermath of concerns raised by parents of the Rose of Primary School, of students who were allegedly affected by asbestos from a recently demolished building, the Ministry of Health sought to inform the general public that the illness may be the cause of another factor. The Environmental Health Department responded to a complaint by the Ministry of Education to investigate the relationship between the removal of asbestos panels from the compound of the Government Information Service GIS, and the manifestation of illness among students of the Rosa Primary School on Monday, January 27, 2014. Asbestos containing panels from a building located on the GIS compound were removed on Thursday, January 23, 2014 under the supervision of the Dominica Solid Waste Corporation and transported to the landfill at Foncoli, observing all necessary precautions. This building is about 75 feet east of the Rosa Primary School, separated by the Baffer State Road. Students of the primary school were reported to have manifested symptoms including itchy skin, dizziness, and nausea, and were sent home on the afternoon of Thursday, January 23rd. However, the Ministry of Health is of the opinion that asbestos containing material removed from the GIS building may not be the cause of the symptoms manifested by the students, since asbestos is not related to acute conditions due to exposure of the asbestos fibers. The panels, which have been removed, also contain asbestos bounded with other construction material, including granite. The bounded asbestos is unable to get airborne in any large concentration to lead to disease. The manifestation of symptoms by students of the primary school may be as a result of other factors for which the Ministry of Health is presently conducting investigations. In other stories, Despite reports that stated the Massac Roman Catholic Church Cemetery was closed by the EHO, Environmental Health Office, due to overcrowding, parish priest of the Massac Catholic Church, Father Franklin Coffey, says this is not the case. He noted for the cemetery to be closed, the EHO must submit a letter to the Bishop of Roseau, his Lordship Gabriel Mazier, who would then inform him, but saying this has not occurred, the cemetery is open for burials. Father Coffey also stated that he conducted a funeral as recent as this Tuesday, January 28th. In 2005, the, the Massac Catholic Church was closed and it was reopened two years later with no improvement in the cemetery. And on an average, we have about 30 burials annually, okay, 24, so let's say for the last 12 years, we had over 240 people buried on that site. But it was the occasion when the Maho Scout people having a, a memorial service for all the deceased scouts you know, over the years. And they were doing a general cleaning up and we saw a lot of bones, you know, remains of the deceased, you know, scattered all over the place. So then, then I decided, you know, something has to be done. The priest revealed that 27 years ago, the Belfast Estate had donated 5.8 acres of land to the parish to be used as a burial site. However, few burials were conducted there as the terrain is mountainous and difficult to manage as it lacked the proper infrastructure. They then returned to the Massac Cemetery ever since for burials. Father Coffey noted a month ago the parliamentary representative, Honorable Rayburn Blackmore, held a meeting with the pastors and priests of the various churches in the parish where Mr. Blackmore promised to bring a team of engineers to the new site to assess the work in need. However, to this date, nothing has materialized. You know, we do have a committee, you know, comprising, which has been headed by Annette Bitt, you know, former chairperson of the village council. She's a chairperson. I know she's doing some fundraising for the site, but I'm not privy to anything, any further development. Okay. I'm also not aware, in fact, I met two environment officers on site and they said, that, you know, they had plans of closing the cemetery. I told them I think it would be a good thing because if they were to close that cemetery, they would have to advise us where we would bury our parishioners. And as you are aware, you know, there's a difference between a Catholic cemetery and a non-Catholic cemetery. For us Catholics, the cemetery is a secret space, you know, and you know, so I think that in itself creates a problem, you know, because for us, you know, we 
annually we have a, our All Saints and All Souls celebration. Okay, so that and I think it creates a, a problem. He said an important aspect before closing any cemetery is to find a new location to be used for burials. And if this is not done, no closure can take place. This is the responsibility of the government, as burying the dead is civic responsibility, he said. Speaking with a source within the Environmental Health Office, the individual stated they submitted a letter to a funeral home who utilizes the cemetery, advising that the Massac Roman Catholic Cemetery be closed as it has exceeded its burial capacity, but they did not close the cemetery. In more news, Mr. Brian Lambert, Chief Operating Officer at Clare Harbour, has announced that the company will hire 147 new employees in addition to the 243 made redundant. We have secured two major clients um, from North America and those two clients will allow us to not only bring back the 243 folks but be able to offer 400 jobs here on the island of Dominica. Now that is in addition to the 300 positions that we have currently working here today. And the combination of those numbers will bring us in excess of 700, which is over the highest point um, that we have been in employees here on the island of Dominica in eight years. Mr. Lambert had in September of 2013 promised to rehire all 243 employees made redundant by the company as a result of the loss of one of their major clients. This is the company's eighth year of operation here in Dominica. The two clients are in the telecommunications and insurance industries um, in the U.S. Um, we, um, We've actually started already. We've brought back about 60 of the original employees. They are now in training um, in the building that you just came through. And we will be bringing the rest of the employees on um, kind of in phases. Um, the two clients kind of seesaw, but overall there are about four phases that will take place. The phases are expected to run through the month of March through to mid-July. He commended the Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, for his governmental support. This is going to place a serious dent in the unemployment numbers in Dominica. And my hope and prayer is that those who will be engaged will treat their job in a responsible manner, that you, you ought to come to work on time, you have to uh, give to your employer the hours that you paid for, you, you'll be being paid uh, to work. It cannot be a situation where you get paid on Friday and because Monday and Tuesday are carnival days, they don't see you on Wednesday or Thursday. According to Mr. Lambert, it is expected that more job vacancies will be opened in the future. The only thing we have to be careful of is sometimes the clients will have specific requests uh, for certain skill set that we didn't have available in the first so many. Uh, but again, with the numbers we're hiring, there'll be no question they'll all be brought back. Negotiations with the two companies run from a period of six to eight months. In other stories, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt is calling on the United States to put an end to its trade embargo on Cuba. Mr. Skerritt, who spoke during a brief address upon his arrival in Cuba on Tuesday, January 28th, also called for the release of five Cuban prisoners, which he said the U.S. had imprisoned illegally. He was on the island where he attended the second summit of the community of Latin American and Caribbean states, SILAC. SILAC is a regional bloc of Latin American and Caribbean states which was created on December 3, 2011 in Caracas, Venezuela. It is always a pleasure to be in this most beautiful country, un Cuba. De estar aquí en este país que es Cuba. The place of our revolutionary brothers and sisters. El lugar de hermanas y hermanos revolucionarios. A country that has stood the test of time. Un país que ha resistido la prueba del tiempo. And I'm very happy to be here in Cuba. Estoy muy alegre de estar aquí en Cuba. And to be around my friends. Y estar rodeado de todos mis amigos. I will continue to support very strongly the Cuban Revolution. Eh, continuaré apoyando eh, muy fuertemente la Revolución Cubana. And continue to ask the United States to end the blockade against Cuba. Y continuaré también. Eh, pidiendo a Estados Unidos que terminen el bloqueo contra Cuba.
and to free the Cuban Five who were imprisoned in Cuba illegally. The Cuban embargo, which began on October 19, 1960, is a commercial, economic, and financial blockade imposed on the island by the United States. The Cuban Five, also known as the Miami Five, are said to be Cuban intelligence officers who were convicted in Miami of conspiracy to commit espionage, conspiracy to commit murder, acting as an agent of a foreign government, and other illegal activities in the United States. They were arrested by the FBI in 1998 and convicted in U.S. federal court in Miami in 2001. Since then, the government of Cuba have been of the view that the men were imprisoned unjustly. In more news, one of the organizers of the newly formed Renegades Calypso 10, Mr. Narin Transetta Murphy, said the success of the inaugural show on Saturday, January 25th, was thanks to the supportive public and Calypso fans. Many who attended the event have been commending the organizers in person, on radio and social media for what they consider to be a well-organized and entertaining event. As one of the organizers, I must say on behalf of Deros and Prosper, we were very proud. We were very um, grateful for the support, even surprised, I mean, because, you know, we are new, a new tent, not new Calypsonian, but new tent, and, and, and we, there were a lot of negative vibes about there, as, referring to us as borderline artists and what have you. But we went out there and we, we did what it took to really have a nice show, a, a show that persons keep talking about, even on the social medias, or all into the Sunday. And, and, and what have you. We were really pleased and, and we must thank the public, the Calypso um, patronizing public and people in general. We must look at the persons who have already come on board, that's people like Deepex, Print Express, Kubuli, Party Shark. And, and I mean, as little as it is, even in this hard economical time, they are making the effort to give. And we are taking the opportunity right now to really call on the other corporate um, in entities out there that could really make a difference and make the show even better than than what than what it is right now. If it, you may not have, as I said, a, a large amount of money to give, but whatever kind contribution you can submit to us, we would appreciate it and it would go a long way. He said the show, which will be held every Thursday at the News on Old School, promised to be fulfilling, entertaining and relaxing and will only keep on improving. They will prove to the critics that uh, we, we are not just borderline artists, especially we are tent is concerned. And this is the, the, the issue a lot of persons may, may, may have. A tent is an entertainment area. It, it, it's real, the, the more relaxed atmosphere. You're not in a competition where you're being judged, lyrics, melody, and, and rendition, and what have you. People come there for entertainment. And we have proven even while we were in another tent. When it comes to that entertainment, especially me, I call myself the Calypso specialist in terms of freestyle. You, not anybody can do this. And we bring all of that. Prosper has his whole MC in capabilities. Deros does his own thing. And, and all the other artists. So we, in terms of tent, while we may not be as um, with the, the super vocals as some of our our fellow Calypsonian. When it comes to 10, we do believe we can hold our end and we have proven that fact that while we may be referred to as borderline, we proved that last Saturday that wasn't a borderline performance. That wasn't a borderline performance. Mr. Murphy is appealing to the public to continue supporting the Renegades Calypso 10 as it is for the people, created by the people, to entertain Calypso fans. We are young in, in, in this and we believe your, your support is very crucial to our, our success and survival. So, I mean, as I said, as it last it is, we are really calling on the person to, to really come and really give us that, that support, that boost. It, we are really appreciative of it. Now, there has been talk or some speculation of a possible venue change. Could you comment on that? Well, <laughs> at this point there, this is, this, 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 I, I do not want to say too much on that because I, I, I would have to speak with my, my other partners and, and see exactly what their views on that are. But, I mean, with, with things, we, we, we are renegades. We never do things the way everybody do it. We are open to, to change. We, we accept constructive criticism and if that is an option that is viable and both logical in terms of because we want to also establish a home for the tent. So that is some one of the things and you know in Dominica you don't really have that much option. So it's a, 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 a thing that yes, okay, they might have merits to a change but they might also have merits to stay in where you are, being there is where you, you, you set your ground, that's where you, you, you took off from. 
So it's a number of things, factors we have to we have to weigh. He added, no matter the location, if changed at any point, wherever the renegades are, is sure to be a crowd pleaser. Mr. Murthy also stated they are open to all ideas and constructive criticism from the public. If you're happy and you know it's an all to drugs, if you're happy and you know it's an all to drugs, if you're happy and you know it, then your best will surely show you. If you're happy and you know it's an all to drugs, the Ministry of Health's National Abuse Prevention Unit organized a secondary schools performing arts festival at the Arak House of Culture on Tuesday, January 28th. The festival was hosted as part of the activities for Drug Awareness Month and presented an opportunity for various secondary schools on the island to come and showcase their talents in a positive way. Focus on the positives, the good initiatives, influence, several performances from participating schools including the Convent High School, Isaiah Thomas Secondary School, Dominica Grammar School, Pierre Charles Secondary, Orion Academy and Portsmouth Secondary School. Boy, are you going to even have a 25 cents to show me? Show me a 25 cents. Make it to you, I'm going to Try it to me. This has been the local segment of the news.